Today I'm going to talk to you about cross-cultural communication. That means communication between different people from different cultures. For example, Chinese culture and Western culture. And the first thing I want to show you is this. What is happening in this picture? Have a look. Can you see the problem with this picture? We can see something very familiar, people doing something. We can see somebody holding something. We can see people wearing different things. But there's a lot of information missing. So it's very hard for us to say for sure what is happening in this picture. It could be anything. It could be a teacher scolding a student. It could be a boss giving instructions to his workers. It could be somebody from the government telling people they shouldn't gather together, they shouldn't protest. It could be a priest in a church blessing his congregation. It could be a film director instructing the actors how to act. It could be a salesman trying to sell something. So can you see what's happening in this picture? We have some data, some facts, but there's a lot missing. So we have to guess we have to fill in the gaps ourselves. Here's another example. What's happening in this one? Who are the people? What are they doing? Again, we see something familiar, a table, somebody holding something, somebody passing something, maybe papers on the table. We don't know exactly what's going on. We have some data, but some is missing. It could be people, it could be a family before a meal, and the father is praying before the meal. It could be a group of friends having a very difficult conversation, an argument. It could be people thinking how to solve a problem. It could be a family that's just received a very sad letter from a relative. Uh, it could be that somebody has left to buy some food and they've just come back and they are handing out the food to the other people. We don't know. There's a lot of data missing. Now, in cross-cultural communication, this is often what we face. We see things we know, we see things we understand, but there's a lot missing. There's a lot of information we don't know. So, cross-cultural communication, lots of missing data, lots of missing context. Now, let's look at a situation in the UK. Jenny is a student from Hong Kong. After a long flight to London, she takes her luggage and waits a long time to catch a taxi from the airport to her new school. You could be Jenny in the future. The taxi is comfortable and the driver seems friendly. When she arrives at her school, the taxi meter reads 32 pounds 50 pence. But then the driver turns around and tells her she should give him 45 pounds. Okay, that's the situation. What does Jenny expect? in this situation. I think it's very clear she expects she should only have to pay the price on the taxi meter, £32.50. What's the meaning of the driver saying you need to give me £45? Jenny will easily think the driver is trying to cheat me, the driver is trying to cheat Jenny. And what is the result? What feeling does this bring up in Jenny when he says, give me 45 pounds? She may conclude this, all taxi drivers in England are bad. Not just one, all of them. All people are dishonest in England. You cannot trust them. I will avoid taking taxis in the future. Can you see, Jenny only has part of the information but she uses that to jump to a conclusion. And her conclusion is negative, and it leads her to some negative results, negative feelings. She starts to feel bad about her new home in England. Now, my advice for cross-cultural communication is stop. When something unusual happens, when something uncomfortable happens, stop, think, observe, then proceed. Now, what are the possible meanings of the taxi driver's action? One possible meaning is that he was trying to cheat Jenny. Not everybody is a good person. It's possible he was trying to cheat. But are there other possible meanings? I 
think we can guess. Maybe there are extra charges for luggage, or road tolls, or bridges, or tunnels. And Jenny doesn't know about this. It's not her culture. Maybe there is a problem with the taxi meter. It's broken. Maybe the driver can charge more during busy times or when driving in central London. Again, this is part of the picture Jenny doesn't see, and it's possible. Maybe the driver added a tip for himself. Maybe in England it's usual to add a tip to the meter fare. Maybe the driver's English is poor. Maybe he is also a foreigner, and he made a mistake when he was pronouncing the fare. Maybe Jenny's English is poor. She misunderstood. So can you see, there are many possible meanings for what the driver did. The first one is maybe correct, but there are other ones that could be correct. So my advice in cross-cultural communication is this. Consider all possibilities before judging and delay your judgment. Stop your judgment. Spend some time before you decide which is the correct meaning. Here's another situation, this time in Hong Kong. You get to know an American student, Jimmy, during a sports competition in Hong Kong. You get along well, you become friends, and so you decide to invite Jimmy to your home for a dinner to meet your family. You're very excited about this. Jimmy comes to your home, and your mum cooks many special dishes for him and the family to enjoy. Okay, so everybody's got ready. What happens next? Jimmy comes, says, and eats. Very little. Says little, eats little. What did you expect from Jimmy before the dinner? I'm guessing you would expect this. Jimmy should be funny, lively, active, talk a lot. Maybe you also expect that Jimmy should eat anything, everything, eat a lot and really enjoy the food. That's what you expect before the dinner. That's what you want to happen. So how do you interpret Jimmy's behavior? Says little, eats little. How do you interpret that? The meaning is, Jimmy is a rude, impolite boy. Don't like him. That's your gut reaction. That's your knee-jerk reaction. And the result, after you have this interpretation, maybe your family say, ah, oh, Americans are not polite. They're not good guests. We will never invite an American to visit us again. We tried our best and we feel angry. Can you see how easy it is to jump to the negative conclusion? Maybe you don't have all the data. So stop, think again, observe, then proceed. Consider all possibilities before judging, delay your judgment. So what could be some other possibilities for Jimmy's rude behavior? Well. Maybe Jimmy is not used to some unusual foods and tastes. Okay? Maybe you're eating a certain kind of seafood, or maybe you're eating a very special fruit called durian, which is very unusual for foreigners, has a nasty smell for us. He's not used to this, so he hesitates. Maybe Jimmy feels forced to eat things he doesn't want to. In Chinese culture, when you are looking after a guest, you often put food into their bowl. That's a way of showing kindness and friendship. But in our country, this could be seen as pushy and uncomfortable. Jimmy doesn't know how to eat some food smoothly. Maybe he doesn't know how to use chopsticks. Maybe he's given a crab and he doesn't know how to open it. So he leaves it. Okay? He doesn't know what to do. Maybe he's allergic to some foods. If he eats some Chinese foods, maybe with some ingredients, he will have a medical condition. He will have a medical emergency. We don't know. Maybe Jimmy can't follow your family's conversational topics. Maybe you're talking about your granny or something you did at Chinese New Year last year. He has no idea what you're talking about. So he decides to stay quiet. Maybe he's nervous about how to behave. He's nervous about offending your family. He feels under pressure. So he thinks, okay, to be safe, I'll say nothing. Okay, then I'm safe. Maybe, and this is a long shot, maybe he already ate too much before coming to your home. He's not hungry. And that's why he didn't eat much for you. So there's many possible meanings. The first one is maybe correct. Maybe he's a bad boy. But there are also other possibilities. So, 
My communication tips for you, especially when you go abroad or when you're meeting somebody from another culture. First of all, what you expect may not happen. You will bring your expectation to every situation, every conversation. And your expectation comes from your life in Hong Kong. And you expect something to happen according to what happens in Hong Kong, and then it doesn't, and you feel confused. What do you do next? Stop. Avoid immediate knee-jerk reactions, because I can tell you, usually these reactions are negative. We always grab the negative, the negative reaction first. We always grab the microphone first. Then, think of all the possible meanings beyond the obvious or negative ones. It could be a negative meaning, but it could be something else. And, find, and delay judgment, if possible. Give the benefit of the doubt. Don't always think the person you are talking to is bad just because you don't understand what they did or what they said. And avoid generalizations. Remember Jenny in the taxi? When the taxi driver talked to her, she immediately said, oh, everybody in England is nasty. Everybody in England is going to cheat you. That's a very dangerous thing to think. It's a generalization. Now, different expectations. You come from Hong Kong, somebody comes from another culture, maybe they have a many different expectations from you. I'll give you some examples. And maybe you've seen some of these before. For example, like different expectations about time. You'll know if I have been your teacher that I like lessons to start on time. And if you're late, I'm very angry. Some cultures have a very flexible expectation about time. In a restaurant in Hong Kong, it's very noisy and exciting. And people like speaking in a loud voice because they're happy. I expect in a restaurant for it to be more quiet, more gentle. Okay, so maybe my expectations clash with Hong Kong's expectations. In some cultures, the group is more important than the individual. In some cultures, the individual is more important. You can bring these expectations to your communication. How do we share opinions? In some cultures, they are very direct. They tell you exactly what they are thinking. In other cultures, they try to avoid telling you directly. They go round and round in circles to make sure you don't lose face. How do some cultures deal with problems? Some deal with them head on, go straight towards the problem, solve it. Some cultures like to go around the problem to avoid it, to keep harmony. How do we show anger? In some cultures, we show anger directly. If I'm angry, I'll show you. In other cultures, we hide our anger behind a smiley face. Sometimes we don't know this. We don't know how somebody is feeling. In some cultures, children are the center of the world, center of the society. In other cultures, they are just one part of society. And same for the elderly. It could be very important or not very important. And some cultures are very hierarchical. That means the boss is the most important, and then you pay attention to who is below the boss and who is above the boss. In other countries, it's more equal. Notice, for all these expectations, I'm not saying Hong Kong is one way, Western countries are another way, because even within cultures, you have different expectations, you have people with different values. So I'm trying not to generalize here. So, our expectations can lead to misunderstandings. Today, I hope you take away these tips for communication. When something unusual happens, when you meet a foreigner, when you go overseas, and something unexpected happens. I hope you remember these pieces of advice. Stop and try to think of all possible means. It will make your life a lot smoother, I guarantee. That's all I want to say for today, and I hope to come back to this topic the next time too, to say more about this. Thank you very much.